Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do some decoupaging for fall and then I'm actually even going to add a Christmas ornament at the end of this. But I got this um, beautiful decoupage rice paper from um, Decoupage Central and so I thought I would try some of these on this video and uh, if you see any that you're interested in um, I have a friend who sells this and um, so uh, I will include her link um, in my description now what I'm going to do is cut these out and you rarely see me cut anything out usually I like to tear them but because I need these to fit a particular size I want to go ahead and cut them out very carefully now I'm going to use the stretched canvases from uh, the Dollar Tree and you get three of them to a pack and I think these are the four by six canvases that I'll be using uh, but I'm cutting each of these out and if you've never decoupaged with rice paper you're missing out because rice paper I feel like is probably the most forgiving um, thing to decoupage with. Uh, you don't have a bunch of wrinkles in it, you don't have air bubbles uh, because of the texture of the paper it seems to let the air out better and um and it's a good sturdy um paper and if you try to tear this which you can it's it's really fibrous so it's a good strong uh, paper to decoupage with and i just absolutely love using it now i'm taking my four by six canvas and uh just painting on some glue and I just like to use clear school glue for my decoupage. I know a lot of people use different types of mediums uh, and I'm sure that those are, are good but this works really good for me also and it's cheap. So um, I'm just adding one of these to each of them. These all look the same if you're just kind of glancing at them but they're all slightly different and uh, for holidays and seasons I like to have small items that I can sell for three to five dollars and um, I even like to put them in a gift bag sometimes and it just makes a really good gift and often uh, people come in my store looking for uh, teacher gifts or secret sister gifts or uh, ornament exchanges and different things like that and if you have items that are five and under um, it, it just works really well and now because I have the white around the edges of this I'm going to be covering the top and bottom strip uh, up but down the sides I want this to all blend so I'm using my bronze gilding wax and just kind of rubbing that over it with my finger and I don't mind if I get a little bit of overlapping onto the paper because that just uh, helps it the picture blend in to the background and uh, I like the look that that has and now I've just gone through my trim and found a couple of different trims that I think will work well on these and I'm gluing it to the top and the bottom. What I should have done because I'm putting hangers on these and I didn't decide to do that until after I had added the trim uh, but what you should do is add the hanger uh, to the top before you put that trim on that way it will hide the ends of your hanger. I made this work anyway because I just glued them over the top and but then I would then I had to add a little bit of extra embellishment to hide that and for the hanger I'm just using some uh, Baker's twine because I just kind of want this to blend in uh, with the look that I already have so here I am adding it over the top again the edges will need to be neatened up and what I end up doing is just adding uh, some little molds that I had made ahead uh, with some leaves on it and finish that off. But again, if you put your string underneath your trim, uh, 
and you put that on before you add that trim, then you won't need to do what I'm doing. And because I'm adding these little leaves here, um, I wanted them to have a little bit more dimension. Uh, when you do your clay molds or your resin molds in this case, um, and you don't do any kind of finish on them, your detail doesn't show up that well. And since I had the bronze down the side, I just decided to take my finger and rub a little bit of the bronze over the leaves. And then I decided also to rub a little bit over the trim to kind of bring all that together. Again, these could be put in a little clear cellophane bag to make them more giftable and maybe add uh, some ribbon to the top. Uh, to tie it shut or you could do what I'm going to do on the ornament at the end of this video and I'll show you how I packaged those in those cellophane bags but I think these turned out really cute and it's just something to kind of hang on maybe a cabinet door or a doorknob or you could even hang this on the wall for fall or you could still just use it as a shelf sitter and put the hanger back behind it. I was also given this rice paper and to me this says Halloween and I don't have anything against any of you who, who celebrate Halloween but I just don't. I don't do any kind of crafting for it. So I was trying to think of how I can make this not look so much like it's for Halloween and make it more for fall. So I decided to make two pictures out of it. One with the little crow because I do like the crow decor and one with the pumpkins and that top I'm just going to discard that all together. Now I'm using this little frame decor from uh, the Dollar Tree and I have removed uh, the uh, little things that were glued to it and then painted it in two coats of the color buttercream so I just did some of these up ahead and I can kind of turn them into whatever I want to. So I tore this little crow out and I'm going to decoupage it on to this. And I know that white stands out a lot, but I have plans for that also. But I was just trying to think of some quick little ways that you can add some fall decor into your booth or into your vignettes at home without having much time or, um, or effort into it. So I'm decoupaging this on and then I'm going to take some of that bronze gilding wax and a brush and just kind of brush it lightly around all this area. And that will kind of blend it, uh, but it will give a little something on that background. Most of that's going to be hidden so it doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, but I just, once I got this on, and then I just took my brush and dipped it in the gilding wax and just kind of worked that into my background. So I started around all the edges and then I just kind of, uh, just kind of worked it into the rest lighter so that it, it didn't have as much coverage. But I wanted around the edges to have quite a bit of coverage and I wanted around the torn edge of the picture to have quite a bit of coverage. And then that other, I just kind of used my brush and kind of dry brushed what was left on the brush. Now, I used to do a lot of painting uh, for my store. I would just take some boards and uh, just paint simple paintings on them. And I sold a lot of those, but uh, they take a lot of time. And um, since I started doing more decoupage, I'm saving lots of time and it sells just as well. Now I want this frame to be 3D, so I'm just taking some Spanish moss and gluing it into the corner and making a little makeshift nest. So uh, this will turn into just a crow at its nest. And I felt like that was a good way to bring that crow in when he's the only thing really that stands out on what I have here. So I felt like it needed something else with some interest. So that's why I decided to do this little 3D um, nest in the corner. So I just glue that. I just keep adding glue until I get it as tight as I want it. And then uh, I hot glued three little eggs uh, little styrofoam eggs in the nest 
And then once I got those glued in, then I felt like I still wanted some height on the other side. And uh, so I just took some little fall uh, sprigs from, um, from a pig that I had left over from last fall and just kind of glued those here and there back behind that nest. I thought about adding a little bit of the lavender, but for me, the lavender, once I put it with that crow, uh, the black and the lavender just kind of made me think of Halloween again, and that's not what I want here. I just want this to be some fall decor. These little beaded wall hangings from the Dollar Tree, I feel like are a really good value, uh, and I did have to add an additional bead or two to it uh, because the, I don't feel like they put enough beads on it uh, but just glue these in here and um, add a little bit more dimension I was just careful to make sure that, that I didn't hide my little crow and then I stamped this little quote from Charles Dickens that says nature gives to every time and season some beauties of its own and I thought that was appropriate for this little fall wall hanging. And I just um, stamped that on an old book page and cut it out very carefully and antiqued around the edges and glued that to the top of the little frame. And now I've turned that little piece of what I would call Halloween decor um, and turned it into just some fall decor. And now for the pumpkin part of the uh, rice paper, I'm going to do another one. And I started out with another one of these frames and just glued um, the other part of the rice paper to, to it. And as you can see here, I've just torn out around those pumpkins and I tried to tear as much of that really dark off as I could. And then I took the bronze gilding wax around this one also and uh, just went over everything that was still showing white. This one was easier because most of it was covered up, so I kind of did full coverage on everything that was left. And I also wanted to make this one 3D, so I took some more of that Spanish moss and glued it down to the bottom. Uh, but with it, instead of making it look like a nest, I just wanted it to kind of blend in with all that straw there on the bottom. And uh, it's just easier to work with the Spanish moss than it would be to take some straw pieces and just uh, keep gluing those on. I felt like I would get a better look. And obviously that's going to need some more. Um, I felt like it still needed some more dimension. And I wanted some of that orange to be down in the corner. So I took a tiny um, styrofoam pumpkin. And I cut it in half. And then, um, and then I'm going to glue it uh, in that little area that is going to resemble the straw. And where I lost the stem when I cut it in half, I just kind of saved it and stuck it back underneath it. And now I don't like the color of this pumpkin, so I just took some of the color terracotta and just kind of dry brushed it over the top of the pump pumpkin to make it blend with the others. And then while my brush was still wet, I dipped it in just a touch of the color buttercream and just added some highlighting over the top of that. So I still had the orange on my paintbrush, but uh, then that buttercream kind of blended with it and gave me some natural highlighting on my pumpkin. And there's how they both turned out. And now here is another rice paper that came from Decoupage Central. And, um, and I really like how this one looks. It's, I love the colors on it. Uh, and I'm going to put the whole thing on my item. This is going to be going on a galvanized bucket. Uh, but I wanted to have more organic edges on this one. So I just very carefully tore it all the way around. And as you can see, when you tear this, it has a real fibrous edge. 
And that's just a really pretty look, I think. So once I got the whole thing tore out, then I put it aside because the bucket that I'm going to be putting it on, uh, I need to paint. So I gave this bucket two coats of the color burlap. I didn't paint the handles. I left those natural. Um, and um, I gave this two coats of the color burlap. And then I'll decoupage that paper over the top. So um, I just used my clear glue and brushed it over my can and then just uh, very carefully rubbed that in place. Again, it's very easy to decoupage with, so um, you can do this without getting any wrinkles or any bubbles. And when I'm decoupaging, especially something larger like this, I like to use some plastic to rub it down with, and I just use... Uh, some of the cheap sandwich bags, the pleated ones that are not don't have the zipper, and use that to rub it on and smooth it out. And then I just took some of my bronze gilding wax and went around the bottom and went around the edges of the decoupage and all these little high spots that I would generally uh, that I would gen generally antique around. I just used this um, gilding wax to do that with, and I was really happy with how this turned out and once it dried I just put a clear finish over the top of it and that's all that I did to this bucket and here is how it turned out I just love the colors on this one I think it turned out so pretty and then the last item I'm going to do is some Christmas ornaments because I was also given this rice paper from uh this also came from decoupage central and I love these old world Santas and um Although I like to um, make sure that I have plenty of, um, of scriptural Christmas decor, I don't mind using these old Santas. I think they have a really neat look. And, um, and as long as you're careful how you use those, I, I don't see any problem with it. Some of you may, but... I'm going to actually um, turn this into more of a scriptural ornament anyway. And um, so I'm going to tear out these images. There was nine on a sheet. And uh, I tore them all out. And then I glued them on this other paper. And it's a it's somewhat of a cardstock. It's actually homemade paper that you get from the Dollar Tree. It comes in a pack of just different colors. And uh, so what I did, I glued this little image from the rice paper onto that um, other paper and uh, so that it would have something solid behind it and you wouldn't be able to see through it at all. Uh, plus, it just gave it another layer. So, once I glued that on there, I took some gold gilding wax and uh, went around the edges. Now, I looked up what is trending for Christmas for this year. And the colors that are trending are actually gold and what they call champagne, which is just like an off-white. So, I thought I would do several ornaments this year in that color. And I've taken my gold gilding wax, and these are those same stretch canvases and I've taken my gold gilding wax all around the edges because um, you're going to see just a little bit of that. I'm going to add some scrapbook paper behind this but you're still going to see a little bit of those edges and even if you didn't you're going to see the sides. So I took my gold gilding wax all the way around it and then I glued some decoupage paper over that. So I just cut it to fit and then I glued it onto my canvas and now the canvas is covered everywhere except where you see the gold gilding wax. And that's going to be the background for my Santa. And then I glued my Santa in place. And as you can see here, this has some room uh, for something at the bottom. Now at this point, I haven't glued my scrapbook paper on yet. But uh, so I, I stamped this scripture. And this is one that I actually found uh, thrifting so I don't think I'm going to be able to find this to add it in the description but I thought this was very appropriate for this ornament 
because it says, How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. And it's almost like Santa telling us that that is that Jesus is the gift that truly matters. And uh, so I just thought that was a way to combine the two and make sure that this represents the true meaning as well. So once I glue these on, then uh, I need to trim out the top and the bottom, I felt like. I wanted to make this more substantial because this is gonna be a Christmas tree ornament. And to me, this is not enough on its own. So I just glued this gold trim to both the top and the bottom, making sure to put plenty of glue on either edge because uh, once you cut this kind of cord, it will, uh, it will start to unravel. So you need to make sure you got plenty of glue on those ends. And I even added some, a little sum for good measure. And I also ended up taking this top piece off and re-gluing it because again, I forgot to add my hanger. And then I glued some to the bottom as well. And then I'll show you how I put these in the little cellophane bags that you get at the Dollar Tree. Now there are two sizes of these, and this is gonna be the smaller size that you get in the wedding section at Walmart. So I just put it down in that bag, and then, uh, and then uh, my sister cut out some cardstock that went along with this, and, uh, and cut it to fit the top of the ornament. And then she folded it in half, and glued some scripture over the top of that and then folded it over this bag and as you can see that makes a good little uh, a good little topper for this and then we just stapled both sides and um, this makes a very good little gift and actually this is a wonderful way to package many of your ornaments because uh, a lot of times adding a package to these just makes a world of difference. And again, here are the rest of the things that I made with that decoupage paper. Again, I'm gonna be adding uh, just a little bit of Christmas to most all of my videos between now and Christmas in order to make sure that I have enough of them done up. And I'll even show you how I display some of them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.